uh, the Pathwork Guide Lectures um, is channeled material that was channeled through a woman by the name of Ava Parekos. So she started um, in the 70s, probably late 60s actually, and into the 70s. She started to channel the guide, and the guide is a group of souls um, who outlined the human condition in 300 and approximately 324 lectures. Um, this is not a precise number, and I probably should get the precise number and will. Um, anyway, Ava, this material, the Pathwork Guide lectures, are very, very, very powerful um, because it bridges spiritual with psychological work. So for fun, um, during our uh, pandemic, I thought that I would read some of the lectures on uh, my um, YouTube page. And if you're interested in the Pathwork and interested in getting the lectures yourself personally, you can go to Pathwork, um, I believe it's pathwork.org, and you will find the guide lectures. You can buy them. And this is um, all money and proceeds. If you send me anything, will go directly to the Pathwork um, Org. I'm not receiving any anything for this other than that I love you and I want you all to uh, thrive during the tough times. So this is guide lecture number one and I'll just read a little bit of it and see how it goes. Um, so it starts with greetings. I bring you God's blessings my dear ones. For the spirit there is another idea in form and substance representing the earthly life of man. This life is a sea, an ocean, and man, or the individual life, is a boat. Often man sees, also sees this picture in dreams. This sea of life offers various aspects. It can be stormy, the sky is gray, and then again, the sun is shining and the ocean is calmer until the next storm comes along. And so it alternates until the boat reaches its destination. The destination is the shore, the world of spirit, which is the true home of man. Thus, all depends on how well one can direct his life. One is a trained, experienced, skillful captain who cannot afford to be afraid of danger. He directs his ship well through these storms and during the calmer and better periods, he gathers strength for the next storm. Another one gets nervous, loses his inner control when a storm is brewing. And yet another one is so afraid that in utter fear, he does not direct his boat at all, but he lets it drift in the storm of life, not gaining anything. You will already be aware that these atmospheric disturbances, the, the thunderstorms, the hurricanes, are tests you have to go through. The clouds that build up. A human being is already trained and a little more sensitive, excuse me, a human being who is already trained and a little more sensitive can feel exactly in which direction the boat of his life is sailing. I will discuss these tests, I dare say, in any group of human beings, be it a family, be it another kind of human gathering, there is at least one being who in his development is so low that he is the play ball of the forces of darkness. He must not be by necessity a thoroughly, e excuse me, he must not be by necessity a thoroughly evil person, no, but it is often sufficient that he does not want to recognize the validity of certain spiritual laws in his own life and he makes no use of them, or that he or she, in spite of some very good qualities, does not want to practice self-honesty. And the dark world takes the material from these vibrations, this lack of discipline and self-recognition, which are the result of man's disregard for spiritual laws. This material is like threads, thin, ray-like threads, and in this case, dark colors and substances, which are woven, knotted, and entangled until there is such a confusion that disentanglement is extremely difficult. But not only this, excuse me, but not only this one being 
excuse me, but not only this one being contributes material for such confusion, also all other people of a group can contribute their share, arising from their own mistakes and weaknesses and wherever they do not abide by spiritual laws. So this is more yarn that is spun until even those who are more advanced cannot see the truth readily at first glance. And often it takes much effort to dig up the truth in such situations. For a human being who is striving for more spiritual recognition is often extremely difficult to know how to meet such, such tests because the dark forces use their own tricks to make a lie appear as truth and truth as a lie, and good as bad, and bad as good. And thus, man gets confused. So he who actually would like to be just, he, he does not know anymore how to act in the right way. And often unconsciously, his own inner sick vibrations of which he is not even aware, add not only to the confusion of the test, but it is also impossible for him to get a clear picture of the situation and thus know how to behave. In order to dissipate these dark clouds and recognize the truth, it is necessary that he acquires spiritual knowledge and develops in the right manner according to his level. His utmost capacity. Because if this is not the case, he will again, unaware of it, become a play ball of the dark forces and his boat will be at the mercy of the storm. He himself is no longer able, at least not as well, to control his boat as it is otherwise, as it otherwise would be. He cannot dissipate the heavy clouds alone to recognize the truth, what actually is the core of the problem, or how he can do or admit in order to benefit spiritually. This is only possible when he walks this path, when he learns discipline to meditate at any time, more so when it is most difficult, when the gales are raging, to establish contact with God and his divine spirit forces, to absorb the inspiration of truth and to absorb himself, to observe, excuse me, to observe himself and all of his faults, conquering all resistance. The, so let me read that last part again. So this is only possible when he walks this path, when he learns discipline to meditate at any time, more so when it is most difficult when the gales are raging to establish contact with God and in his divine spirit forces to absorb the inspiration of truth and to observe himself and his, all of his faults, conquering all resistance. The, the spiritual laws can or should be lived in three different levels. The higher the development is, the deeper the level of, pe of penetration will be in the deed, the acting, in the thought, and in the emotions. So the spiritual laws can or should be lived in three different levels. The higher the development is, the deeper the level of penetration will be. So number one, in the deed, the acting, and number two, in thought, and number three, in emotions. The emotional level is the highest level and the most difficult one to live because emotions are not only to a great extent unconscious and it needs work, willpower, and patience to bring these emotions into consciousness, but they cannot be instantly controlled and not as directly as acting and thinking. And it requires tedious mental and spiritual work, self-analysis, and a thorough absorption of the spiritual laws until the emotions can slowly begin to change. The less developed a person is, the more superficial his understanding of and obedience to the spiritual laws can be. And at first God gave you the Ten Commandments, dealing with man's acting, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not lie, etc. For man of that time, it was already much, and even for certain groups of man in that time, those incarnated from lower spheres. The next step is that man should cultivate his thoughts. 
He often acts rightly, but his thoughts run quite differently. He acts rightly because he comprehends that. Otherwise, he will get into conflict with his surroundings. But it's not easy. It's not easy to control his thoughts. And he desires things which are not in accord with spiritual laws. He just did not understand yet that his impure thoughts and emotions lead to such conflict because all thoughts and emotions have spirit form and substance and thus bring along consequences and chain reactions, even though man cannot foresee the results immediately. And this foresight requires spiritual vision, which can only come as a result of development. Thus Christ brought you as an expansion of the spiritual laws and commandments, excuse me, thus Christ brought you as an expansion of the spiritual laws and commandments, the teaching that you can also sin in thoughts. And at his time, man already started to become open for a further expansion and deepening. The human being at the middle level, considering it the most difficult to cultivate and purify his thoughts, has already a great advantage over those who have managed the keeping of the laws by acting rightly. But my dear friends, you must learn to dig deeper in order to touch your true emotions, that which so often remains in the unconscious, which is so easily and frequently covered up with a sweet coat and pretext in self-deceit, irrecoverably, it leads to inner conflicts and sometimes also to conflicts with his surroundings if he does not want to realize the true roots of these conflicts. So it is quite a task to purify these thoughts in such a way. And whoever has with great effort reached the step, and all these steps can only be attained with great effort and discipline, knows it does not come by itself. And then it is not so easy for man to realize that his emotions here and there deviate from his thoughts and his desires. But it is just this discipline that God requests from everybody. This last step and deepening is of course the most difficult one to acquire. And this is the goal which all of us want to reach. It is the true purification. <laughs> he who is able to bring his inner feelings into his concert, excuse me, he who is able to bring his inner feelings into his consciousness is willing to recognize that these feelings are not necessarily parallel to what his thoughts have realized as truth, has accomplished quite a lot. And that's a really big sentence, and I'm going to read it again. So he who is able to bring his inner feelings into his consciousness is willing to recognize that these feelings are not necessarily parallel to what his thoughts have realized as truth and has a he has accomplished a lot. God, you know, I want to read that again. He who is able to bring his inner feelings into his consciousness is willing to recognize that these feelings are not necessarily parallel to what his thoughts have realized as truth has accomplished a lot. And only those who do this continuously, slowly attaining mastership, will be able to break through to the truth arising from a problem, dissipating these dark clouds so that the core can be found and one knot after the other can be disentangled. Only those who courageously face themselves again and again, whereby vanity would be an insurmountable obstacle, can gain the true sight of another human being in an outer situation. And those who are blind towards themselves are also blind towards others. These knots and entanglements are also spirit forms, my dear ones. And by the way, when, when I say something like my dear ones, it's not Ray Dawn saying my dear ones. I'm reading the lecture as channeled through Eva Parekos, and it's the guides, it's the spirit, the non-embodied the non beings who are speaking to you. So just so you know, it's not me saying dear ones, although you are dear to me. So these knots, let me continue here. These knots and entanglements are also spirit forms, my dear ones. 
They are a reality which we can observe in all these human groups. These entanglements are found everywhere, spun from the yarns and the threads of the dark forces. And everybody contributes his share, but often there is one human being who adds especially much to create and tighten the knots and expand the confusion. And if there is only one human being in such a group who walks on this high and direct spiritual path, who truly knows himself in every day anew, he will be able again, not from one day to the next, to slowly disentangle one knot after the other until no knot is left and everything is clarified. And thus, this human being does not need to deceive himself any longer, which has been most detrimental and burdensome to his progress. Of course, at first the weak human being will resist self-recognition because confusion feeds his lower self, which prefers the path of least resistance, of vanity, of self-delusion, and which, frequent, which frequently thrives on discord. But after a while, this weak human being will have to feel liberated when the clouds disappear from his life, although he did try to cling to them. And only when the real truth is replaced in an obscure situation will there be no question as to what it is that is the right attitude, what is justice, and what is the right action. Everybody knows himself sufficiently, or should strive to reach this point, to ask himself the question, what will I be able to do to participate in God's plan of salvation. For many, it may not even mean to work in the public, but each one of you on a small scale can and should start to participate. You all have a task in this plan of salvation, even the weakest one. For him, it may be a major accomplishment to overcome one shortcoming, to get on even balance with another human being in this incarnation to adapt his actions to the laws of God and to curb his lowest desires. Of another, more, more is requested, but each one has to work on what is most difficult for him or her and what requires most discipline. And each one purifies and develops within the capacity of his level and strength. And for those who are more advanced in their development, this purification process is automatically connected with the resulting ability to disentangle knots in his surroundings or to clear up confusion in situations, etc. And thereby he or she makes up for, for past wrongdoings. Thus he also participates in God's plan of salvation where each actual contribution counts so much. More tasks can be found. All human beings want to be happy, of course, and we understand this. If there were not the longing for happiness and perfection in the human soul, there would be no spiritual development. But there are only a few who think, what can I give? What can I contribute to God's plan of salvation? You only want to receive, maybe not directly by actually praying for the fulfillment of a witch or for happiness, but in your self-will, in your feeling, and often in your thinking. You want the best for yourself and are unhappy over the problems of life. But did you ever ask God, what can I do for you? For he who claims happiness for himself as the final goal, which is usually the case without really being aware of it, you interrupt the rotating life force, which to which the spirit, the spiritual is subjected. Let me read that again. But did you ever ask God, what can I do for you? For he who claims happiness for himself as the final goal, which is usually the case without really being aware of it, interrupts the rotating life force to which the spiritual is subjected. And as soon as the life force is interrupted, it is dead. Even if you are granted the fulfillment of a wish and the benefit you receive from it represents the ultimate goal within you, it is nothing that can grow within you, and thus it cannot keep you happy for a long time. 
So only he who keeps the rotating life force actively flowing in that he consciously or at all times filled with the desire, acts and feels that which he received, help, grace, happiness, fulfillment, divine intervention, guidance, must be spiritually evaluated and is in service of the plan of salvation, will then be enabled to truly living true inner happiness. And to achieve this, you can and should ask for divine guidance. Yes! A human being who acts in this way is truly embedded in the divine order and his happiness will never become shallow and nor will it dry or die out, but it will always be pulsating, actively renewing itself continuously. Moreover, only such a human being can be found worthy of special help and intervention. Yes, my dear ones, this idea has been recognized by just a few human beings. The others pray to God wanting and requesting, but not willing to give anything to God, to give to the world as a tribute for this battle which is so important. Think about this. If you go to God in this way, you will often receive more enlightenment and help to disentangle the knots and strength will be added to safely direct the boat of life in the storm so that all of us find our way strengthened and illuminated as it should be. Now, I will shortly discuss a further subject before I turn to your questions. So I'll stop here because the guide would then take questions when Ava was channeling the guide. They, she was in a room of people who would come for the, for the lectures and her sessions, and there would be questions that the people would ask the, um, the guide. So um, this one little piece will be, and then I'll stop. Uh, so it frequently happens that a human being who is blessed with making contact with the world of spirit tries to test the spirit or the connection in the wrong way. Of course, man should test the spirit. I've advised you previously on how this can be done and that you have to take the time and the effort to get acquainted with the sphere because you cannot test that which you know nothing or little about, especially a complicated field as that, as this, as the non-manifest. And I've also said that you have to test the spirit openly, not by tricks or underhanded questioning. There are fixed laws in the field which should become evident to you as you think about it. But man sometimes does not think profoundly enough and approaches the subject with the wrong concept. Wow. We must often realize that people come here with specific thoughts, assuming that if spirits are really here, they will be able to answer these questions without my asking them aloud. Or similarly, and this frequently not because the questions are such that they could not be revealed in public. No, but simply because they want to test the spirit. You know that the many times a question has been answered without having, um, without having been asked and allowed, but not when it serves the purpose of proving the existence of spirit and their connection with man. No, my dear ones, in this way, God's spirit world will not allow itself to be tested. This is not real testing, and I have given you hints how this should be done, because it is possible that, for example, an evil spirit may take pride to answer such a thought question in order to catch man in his act or in his net. Excuse me. So what the guide is saying is basically it's not just, you know, God-centered, protected, good spirits with good intentions. That actually there is a level of consciousness that is not in, in form that could also be dark, dark forces. And I think as human beings we've seen and we've witnessed what the dark forces can do. Um, and it's not pleasant. <clears throat> Anyway, I think I'm going to stop here because it's now questions and the guide does um, get a bunch. And that is the guide lecture number one. Um, and this is page five. Um, I will do I will do the question and answer in the next in the next recording. This is my first and we'll see what happens. Okay, thank you.